My name is AJ Schaller and I'm the executive chef of CREA, the Culinary Research and Education Academy in the U.S. CREA was established in 1971 by Dr. Bruno Gousseau when he started to train top chefs in France how to cook sous vide with precise cooking. CREA opened their first uh, office in Paris in 1991. We also have locations in Thailand, and soon we're gonna have a test kitchen and learning facility in Dubai as well. And our team consists of a lot of different professionals in the industry. Of course, we have chefs, we have scientists, and we also have QA professionals, quality assurance professionals that can help with food safety, HACCP plans, or anything that's related to a food safety management system. My name is Bruno Gousseau. I am a chief scientist of Cuisine Solutions. I am the founder of uh, Sous Vide Cooking. I am in Paris today. My name is Irvin Van Oort, and I'm a chef consultant here at Crea USA. I was introduced to Crea five years ago in a national culinary com conference. Uh, where Bruno was given a crash course in sous vide and that piqued my interest and uh, the rest is history. My name is Robert Karkin and I'm a culinary specialist here at CREA in Washington, D.C. Prior to being on the team, I had found out about CREA during my time as a freelance recipe tester with Cuisine Solutions while working on Sous Vide Magazine. My name is Isabella Vilgreen. I am the Sales and Development Associate here at CREA in Washington, D.C. I found out about CREA through my family. I have a couple family members who have worked for the company for a number of years now. And just through hearing them talk um, at lunches, dinners, family gatherings, etc., uh, I was introduced to Cuisine Solutions and then introduced to CREA. I am uh, Olivier Marquet, VP uh, of Operation at uh, Cuisine Solution and uh, General Manager at uh, CREA. I commute between the different uh, Cuisine Solutions and the CREA site as necessary, uh, but I live in France. I have known CREA since coming out of uh, engineering school and always found uh, very interesting that link uh, between the industrial world and the culinary environment. So. I'm uh, Marianne, Chief Engineer at uh, CREA France in Paris. I uh, heard for the first time about CREA when I was a student at uh, Ferrandi uh, Culinary School. I had a training about sous vide and uh, CREA was um, uh, named as the reference on the subject. My name is Justine and I work in CREA since three years and I'm in charge of all the culinary parts at CREA France. At the end of my traditional cooking training, I wanted to learn more about food biochemistry. So I did a professional cooking license and some of my courses were in CREA. That is how at the end of these three years of training, I joined the CREA team to take care of all the culinary parts. My name is Guillaume Czarneski. I'm the sales manager in CREA France. I um, discovered CREA during a training course in 2014 at Ferrandi, French Gastronomy School, um, where I was a student. My name is Chloe. I was born in Paris. I joined the CREA uh, team as an engineer um, consultant since uh, 2008. Uh, in uh, other words, uh, I will uh, celebrate uh, my 13th uh, year in March of this year. Uh, as I'm, I'm uh, enough uh, superstitious, uh, I hope um, this will bring me uh, luck. Uh, also, I can say uh, I'm a survivor because I'm the oldest uh, engineer um, in the CREA. I'm Charlotte Gousseau. I'm marketing communication coordinator for CREA in Paris and uh, I live in Lyon. Uh, I have always known CREA and the sous -vide. I could even say that I was born and I grew up with it, uh, like my child can say now. Uh, in my family and my entourage, everybody who know Bruno know Subi because they always speak about Subi. Subi cooking is cooking under a vacuum at precise temperatures in a water bath. 
to cook in the water if you want keep the taste keep everything in the product you need to stop the washing to put a special skin around your product and that is a plastic and sous vide cooking allows you to control temperature with a great precision and regulates the temperature to 0.1 degrees so it's a very very nice technique to cook perfectly The sous vide process has several steps to it, but they're always in the same order and they're very precise. The most important thing when you start the process is to have very good quality ingredients before you start cooking the product sous vide. It's true that no matter what the quality of the ingredient is before it's put in the pouch, it's just going to carry on that same flavor and actually amplify and multiply the flavor. So if you have a really great product to start with, it's going to be even more amazing after it's cooked sous vide. If your product's not so nice in the beginning, then well, you can kind of guess where that would go. So the first thing that we do when we cook sous vide is we portion the food. We make sure that it's always the same size and shape, especially if we're doing batch cooking, because every batch that you make when you cook sous vide, we're monitoring the core temperature of the product as well as the ambient temperature of the water itself. After your product is evenly portioned and scaled, One of the things that you can do to help contribute to the flavor of the proteins is sear it. With meat, uh, poultry, lamb, beef, pork, a lot of those we sear in advance. The goal is not to cook the food through. In fact, you want to keep it raw in the core because you're going to cook it sous vide after. But the goal is to create some color through the Maillard reaction, which is the process of the browning of the meat. It's a, a chemical reaction with the amino acids and the sugar inside of the food. And it begins to firm up a little bit the exterior of the food, but also that crispiness isn't going to stay on the food when you cook it sous vide because it's cooked in a, a moist environment. What's going to happen is the flavor, that really wonderful, deep umami flavor of that Maillard reaction on the outside of the food is going to seep into the juices in the pouch. And those juices are going to pass in and out through the protein as it's cooking. And that way you have a nice, nice uh, flavor that carries throughout not just the exterior of the food, but into the core as well. When we do the course and we compare the uh, food that's been seared versus not seared before it was cooked sous vide, almost always the students prefer the meat that's been seared in advance. Another thing that you can do to season your seafood, uh, of course you could sear it if you wanted to, but we usually like to focus on the pure flavor of the seafood, so we'll do different brining processes depending on the fat content. And after all of that's done, We actually chill the product properly uh, so it's cold enough to pack in a pouch before we season it. A lot of people ask like, why don't you season before you sear? It's a bit counterintuitive at home when you're cooking traditionally, you season your food before you sear it in the pan. The reason we don't do that is we're cooking with precision, not just precise temperatures, but precise seasoning as well. So there's a certain percentage by weight of seasoning that we put onto the food that's cooked sous vide. After that, One of the very important parts of cooking sous vide is vacuum packing it so there's no air left in the pouch for proper heat transfer during cooking. After that, the only way to know what the temperature of your food is in core is to probe it. So once the food is packed properly, we want to cook it uh, quickly thereafter. We don't want to leave it for too long packed without it being cooked all the way through. So we probe the food, make sure that the tip of the probe is touching the center of the food itself and then we cook the food in batches. There's a lot of different ways that you can cook sous vide. We actually throw, show three different techniques of uh, cooking processes in the course. And if you were cooking at home, a lot of people sometimes might just open the pouch and eat the food right away after it's cooked sous vide. But we've discovered, uh, and Dr. Gousseau has um, definitely enforced a proper chilling process. To fix the flavor of the product and the taste of the product, you need to cook and chill the product after. During the chilling, you fix all the elements you want increase in a product. And when the product is cooked and chilled, because you cook at precise temperature, you develop new texture, a beautiful color, you develop a beautiful juiciness and a great tenderness.
Grant influences the food industry by improving efficiencies, whether you're a small restaurant or a high volume establishment, by streamlining operations and maintaining consistencies through precise cooking temperatures. Crea Consulting Services contributes to the future of the food service industry by helping do menu curation, as well as pick out small wares, equipment, and recipe platforms. The food service industry has been influenced greatly by Crea all around the world. I learned about Crea close to 15 years ago, and it was because I learned from a chef that had taken the Crea course. So it's almost like a network or an expanding web of information that Crea transmits to the people that you learn from. And that way, everybody tries to cook sous vide properly. Crea has greatly influenced all of the top chefs in the world. Uh, they've trained, and Bruno has trained, over 80% of the Michelin starred chefs in the world. And we certainly would be lost without Crea's guidance with sous vide. Crea brought consistency to the kitchen uh, by allowing, uh, transforming food to a repeatable uh, standard. Uh, it has allowed a non-professional chef to present a uh, high taste profile uh, food and certainly uh, streamline the service. I think uh, Crea has influenced the food service industry and all food professionals thanks to uh, its uh, recognized scientific uh, expertise. At Crea, we are really a team of uh, passionate people. So we keep uh, constantly um, searching and learning about subjects. Crea team explains always the, the why and how of cooking techniques. We also have three functions. One of them is training, and we continue to do them approximately four times a year on site for both sous vide and cryo concentration and extraction. And we also do off-site training, so we'll travel all around the world. Um, we have partnerships with hotel schools, with culinary schools. We'll go visit hotel groups, restaurant chains. Um, we can host private trainings in, in our uh, laboratory kitchen and also online as well. You can check it out on our website at lacrea.com. So training, consulting, and research and development is how we spend our days. I believe the uh, major benefits of sous vide is the uh, guaranteed food safety. The fact that you can obtain uh, best possible uh, taste and texture on uh, quite a lot of products and uh, you minimize uh, reheating and uh, assembly time of the different products at the point of service. Uh, with the sous vide, you can cook at precise temperature and all the flavors are concentrated. Uh, with sous vide, you can have always the same uh, rare meats. The benefits is free to, to, to master your, your products. And also you have uh, this shelf life I think sous vide cooking is very interesting for all meats that need a long cooking time to have a tender and a juicy result. The Crea sous vide course, we focus on three major uh, categories of food, but then also get deep into the scientific theory behind them as well. The first day of the sous vide course in Crea, we focus on seafood. So we look at different ways to season the seafood, how to treat different fish with different fat content, different percentages of fat content. And then also we look at shellfish as well. So that's a really fun day to kind of get your feet wet in the training, learn how to probe properly. And then of course we have scientific theory lecture after. Probably the most important day for me is the meat day because each meat has different properties, different colors, different textures. If a meat has more collagen or fat or tough connective tissue in the center, we learn how we apply time as a way to break down that collagen and connective tissue and turn it into gelatin and really get the meat nice and tender. It's very interesting to see how to treat meat differently and you walk out of the course uh, learning a lot more about meat than you'd think you would. Also, there's a lot to eat as well. We all get to see in the beginning of the course how amazing sous vide is when it's treated to seafood and meats. But one of the things that really is a showstopper for the trainees is vegetables. Interestingly enough, I think people don't really pay attention to the difference between sous vide vegetables and uh, traditionally cooked vegetables that much. But since the sous vide vegetables are cooked at a lower temperature in a longer time, and also they're packed in a pouch with no air inside, 
it's wonderful because it keeps all of the nutrients, all of the antioxidants, all of the natural minerals and flavors inside of the pouch. Uh, we fix the flavor and though it takes longer to cook, the difference in flavor is incredible. It also can help protect some of the color of the vegetable depending on which it is. Um, yellow, red, orange, all of those colors do really well sous vide because it's uh, keeping it from oxidizing. One of the things that we do in the course is we compare the fruits and the vegetables and the produce side by side with some that have been boiled or cooked at a higher temperature. And I remember the trainees always look at us and say, wow, that is what a carrot is supposed to taste like, or that's what a beet is supposed to taste like. It's really eye-opening. Increase in interest in sous vide in 2020 has been really interesting because due to the pandemic, a lot of people have had more time at home um, and therefore have been giving themselves a little more time to focus on what they're interested in and, and kind of get into new hobbies. So we've had a lot of people sign up for our online courses and it's been great to see how many people are still coming back and interested in taking each one after another. So it's great to see that people started their sous vide journey with us. And then we hope that that'll segue into them, hopefully coming to our corporate offices and taking our courses in person. I think with the COVID-19 crisis, uh, 2020 was the year to show uh, the world the benefits of sous vide. Uh, sous vide has become the best solution for the restaurant to continue the business with a safety and tasty production. Uh, I think Subit found during this year the recognition that he deserved. This past year has proven to be very interesting for every business, uh, including the restaurant business and the food service business with the onset of the pandemic. And we have had lots of uh, friends that own restaurants or hotel groups and everyone took a hit. There's, there's no question about that. But then it left uh, owners and head chefs in a position where they had some difficulties to, to overcome. One of those was having an increased shelf life on product. So one of the benefits of sous vide is that when it's cooked and chilled properly, you extend the shelf life by at least two or three times than something that's traditionally cooked. Because you have no contamination after the cooking, you can preserve long time the product without oxygen and oxidation and without uh, bacteria. Safety is perfect. You destroy all the pathogenic vegetative form of pathogenic bacteria during the cooking. And then by shielding, you can stabilize the product for a long period. One of the other conflicts that people ran into during the pandemic was having enough staff to be able to, to maintain the restaurants. A lot of restaurants turn to delivery. Sous vide works really well for that because it cuts down on pickup time because the product is properly cooked all the way through and through. It's the tenderness that you need. So rather than cooking something for 12 hours sous vide and having it ready just for service, you could get it done in advance and heat it to order. During the pandemic as well, all across the world, people became concerned about the safety of the products that they're ordering and especially the food that they're ordering. Everybody turned to delivery of food. With that, we all learned that with sous vide, there's very minimal touching on the center of the plate products. So when it arrives on site at the restaurant to be prepared for delivery, there's very little um, adulteration or manipulation of the food itself. You just put it into your program settings on your equipment it's hot all the way through and it's ready to go. So there's very minimal handling involved when you have uh, sous vide, whether you um, buy it already manufactured or prepare it yourself. And you know that the food is coming in fully pasteurized and safe. When we do the sous vide course, and of course all of the practices that we have with cooking sous vide in our manufacturing sites, we're using pouches to protect the food from the water in which it's cooking. One of the biggest questions that we always get is how do we know if the plastic is safe that you're cooking in? 
Most of the pouches that are used in sous vide cooking, if they come from a reliable source, are free of endocrine disrupting chemicals and also BPAs that might be unsafe when they're heated. Um, any of the pouches that we use in sous vide cooking are heat safe. And we also make sure that they are as thin as possible so that way the heat transfer reaches the food properly. Of course, we all are working towards a solution for using plastics in the kitchen. The CREA team, especially in France, has been working on this project for a very long time. We have scientists dedicated to the process trying to come up with a solution for using plastics, but you can be assured that the plastic that's used in sous vide cooking is very food safe and heat safe. I love the beef, but because the beef is very complicated system of meat. I love because it's the first product I cook so in because uh, you can develop a lot of beautiful things. In the beef you have very uh, tender meat, you have uh, hard meat and when you cook a hard meat you increase the taste for a long time. My favorite one is the white uh, asper asperic juice and uh, filet mignon. I would say my favorite food to cook sous vide would be pork belly because the end result is juicy and tender. My favorite food to cook sous vide are vegetables because you rediscover the original flavor and the products and they are really come true. Definitely, I think my favorite sous vide, sous -vide food is uh, all the vegetable, but uh, first of all, the long cooking like uh, beef chick with red wine sauce, um, beef chuck, uh, and as well the sweet bread, well, most often too much or not enough cooked in restaurants. My favorite food to eat sous vide would be the 72 hour short rib because the only way that you can prepare it is sous vide and it takes three days to achieve the tenderness of a braised short rib while still maintaining a medium or color. I love eating uh, marinated uh, pork ribs with uh, barbecue sauce. Uh, believe me, uh, it's very delicious. I really love the rack of lamb and uh, small potatoes with that. It's a quite uh, easy, um, easy dish, but it's uh, very tasty. The future of CREA is looking really bright. It's a great time to be in this industry in the sense of helping chefs to streamline and make their processes safer. We've seen our consulting really expand very quickly. For us, sous vide is the past, the present, um, for sure the future uh, for the world of catering. So um, CREA help companies to optimize the quality of their product the, organi the organization of their productions uh, while preserving food security. Uh, we can say that uh, we help you to prepare the world of tomorrow. We also do a lot of high level R&D, so we're always focusing on things that are the future of sous vide. And whether or not we're starting to manufacture it or it's intended for production immediately, we're really thinking outside of the box. We call it kind of the black ops function um, within CREA. And one of those things that we're focusing on and have started training on is called extraction, flavor fixation, and cryoconcentration. And it's a wonderful new technique that is really where sous vide was about 30 or 40 years ago, where we focus on any sort of trimming that can come from produce or vegetables, also uh, natural liquids and the functional properties of those liquids to be able to contribute flavor to the dishes that you're making.